Hello, I'm Sandra Murray from the White Mountain Community Garden here in the heart of Sholo, Arizona. Fall is beginning here in the mountains. The days are shortening and the nights are getting cooler. So we're thinking, we've got to preserve our bounty. We've got to prepare that soil for next year and a whole lot more is going on. Education is key here at the White Mountain Community Garden. We're fortunate to have this awesome kitchen to have some classes in. We're at the United Methodist Church in Sholo, Arizona. Again, we have a great community garden and great community in general that allows for us to come here. Uh, we again have Chantal Skousen here with us. Today the topic is fermentation. So uh, we're going to learn how to make some sauerkraut a variety of different ways and so we can all do this at home. Okay, so today we're doing fermentation and Merriam-Webster defines it as a chemical change with effervescence. And then more broadly, it's an enzymatically controlled transformation of an organic compound. So we're gonna take these organic compounds, we're gonna transform them into some really good stuff for our tummies. Wow. And so, you know, what kind of foods are fermented? Do we eat every day? I know we pickles. pickles. Okay, fermented Cucumbers, pickles. Cabbage. Cabbage. Sour, sauerkraut. 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 So we got the kimchi. We've got yogurt and cheese. Um, sourdoughs. Mm. So like sour bread. Sour breads. Salami. 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 Yeah, salami. Um, obviously, everybody's all, oh, you're fermenting, so you're making beer or wine. And we didn't do, we're not doing that today, no. But <laughs> that is something you can do. Uh, root and ginger beers. Mm. Uh, soy sauce. Soy sauce, fish sauce, um, tofu. Uh, vinegar starts out as something fermented, and then they distill it to get the white vinegar. Um, kombuchas, kefirs. And then the herbal elixir meads that are in this book that we talked about, and the, he's, the author of this book says that that is more, that is better than an herbal ton, uh, tincture, which is interesting. Then he describes it, and we love this book. This is kind of the fermenter's Bible. It's Sandor Katz, Art, The Art of Fermentation, and it has a foreword by Michael Pollan, whom I love very much, and yeah. I don't think I'd join a cult, but if he started one, maybe. <laughs> okay, and then so how for fermenting? We're creating an anaerobic environment. That's an environment that is devoid of oxygen. And in that environment, it's gonna break down the food. I'm gonna use this jar here. It's gonna break down the food by eating the sugars in there, and it's gonna push out bad stuff. And it's gonna produce an organic acid, a gas, or an alcohol. And so today we made sauerkraut and we used, we've had regular cabbage and we brought some red cabbage for color. You can most certainly do all red cabbage. I also brought some carrots to mix in and some beets for flavor and for color. And then if anybody wanted to do just the carrots with dill, so I brought carrots and dill and we brought some pepper flakes and some garlic for flavor. And so for your salts, you wanna make sure that you're using um, a pickling salt, non-iodized, no uh, anti-caking uh, compounds in it. You can use a sea salt, a Himalayan salt, and a kosher salt. You just don't want that uh, iodized salt because it will inhibit the growth of the good bacteria. And make sure that you use the right amount of salt because the salt is gonna make those bad guys, it's gonna push them away, and it's gonna allow the good guys to come in. And that's what's important, you want the good guys. And then if you're gonna take your, your pretty jars, you should take probably a week. You're gonna wait for the activity to die down a little bit in it. And then you're gonna taste it, and as long as it's still crispy, you're good to go. If it's mushy, it has gone too far. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's not good. But these carrots, they may take a little bit, yeah. a little bit longer than the cabbage. But watch, again, watch the activity on it. Could be because of the size. 
Yeah, just because in there, you know, they're a lot harder than a, right. more denser than a cabbage is. But just watch that activity. Okay. And thank you guys so much for coming. I appreciate it. I hope you all learned something fun. <laughs> thank you. Frost has come to the garden and that's the official sign that it's fall. And once the frost hits, which it did on the 23rd of September, the garden is dead. It decimates almost everything. So when that happens, it's time to clean up. And so that's what we're doing in the background here is we're picking plants that are dead and old tomato plants, bean plants, pea plants, flowers, we're picking them all out of the ground. And there's two things you can do with those. You can put them in a nice compost pile with manures and stack them up. Oh, wonderful compost for next year. What we're going to do with some of them is especially with the beans, which are legumes, which put nitrogen into the soil, is we just picked them and laid them on top of the soil. You can even leave them in the ground if you want to till next year. They will put nitrogen in the soil. We are taking the flowers, which are full of seeds, and putting them in another part um, of the garden. We are also taking some of our dead tomato plants and putting them in our asparagus beds instead of straw. It'll cover them up for the winter, it'll feed the worms, everybody's happy. Something else we're gonna do this fall, and we also have done, as we've planted, is to put in what is called a green crop, um, a cover crop, or a green manure. And that consists of legumes such as um, rye, oats, peas, beans, and vetch. And this is just a sample of what we use. If this is all in a bag. You can use old bean seed, old pea seed, rye seed, and we plant it in the garden and it puts nitrogen in the soil. So we are going to replace everything that we pull with some of this green crop to put nitrogen in the ground naturally through the roots. That's, that's what we have done some in the spring, a little bit in the middle of the summer, and we will do it again here in the fall. Hi, my name is Dave Alexander and I'm the principal at Lexington Life Academy. Uh, we're a school for autistic kids. We're enrolling kids now, preschool to 12th grade. Um, it was started by a guy named Harrison who wanted a better education for his sister. Um, we come to the community garden twice a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays, trying to help the kids learn um, where their food comes from, um, how they can benefit from it. Um, they take the food from here, bring it to the kitchen at school, and cook it so they can learn life skills and things like that. Yeah, I spent the last four years at Shiloh High School running their self-contained program, and that's where we started coming to the community garden um, so they could learn the life skills, and they have their own plot now, and that program continues. I've moved to Lexington now, and I'm the principal, and I wanted to continue volunteering in the community. Uh, we volunteer here at the Community Garden, we volunteer at um, Pet Allies and a couple other places uh, within the community. Uh, they enjoy it very much so. Um, they like coming out here, they like getting the fresh air, doing a little hard work. Um, they complain a little bit, but they're learning. Uh, we plan to have our own plot here at the Community Garden where we grow our own food so we can take more of that into the Life Skills kitchen and be able to cook and learn. Uh, those kind of things. Hello, I'm Vicki Matsumanji. Welcome to the uh, White Mountain Community Garden. I'm in the high tunnel with Trina Rupert, and um, we're going to talk about how we're prepping for next year, what we're doing with the uh, crops in here now. Uh, we have a lot of tomatoes, that we'll keep until November. Yes. That's what I understand. Yes. And then we'll start building the soil. Now, how are we gonna build the soil? After we pull everything out, we will want to put some 
uh, some sulfur in the soil to lower the pH. When we tested the soil, high, high in pH. Very high. So sulfur and peat moss will pull that down gradually over the next few months. We will put maybe a cup of sulfur for a whole row and a, a bag of peat moss to a whole row. We would also like to put in some compost that has some organic steer manure in it and some of our clippings from last year would be fabulous in here for these plants for the winterized high tunnel. Right. Now, once we get everything out in November um, and we're going to build the soil, we're just going to let things sit uh, because from December 3rd to January 8th, okay. that, air, that time of, uh, is called per Persephone days. And this is when we have the least amount of sun, less than 10 hours of sun, which the plants need at least 10 hours of sun. To grow decently. Right. And even to, um, for the seeds to sprout and germinate, right. they need that sun. Yes. So the plants will be resting, everything will be resting, but actually they'll be, what, kind of generating energy. Yes, they will be generating energy and filling the, the soil will be busy with microorganisms. It's warm in here. It's not as cold outside. So there will be mycorrhizae and there will be worms and bugs working through the soil in here, eating the little bits of compost and, and degraded things we've put in here. They'll be happy and they're not right. going to sit all winter. They're going to be busy eating and making some good soil for us. So mid-January we'll start planting again and we will plant uh, cool season uh, greens like beets, uh, turnips, especially your kales, kale. and your chards, lettuces, Mustard. mustards, Mustard. all of those really really like the cold right. and will do well right. in here. So having something like a high tunnel means that we can grow year-round here. We can. We and, can. In fact we have a winter crew that actually comes in separate right, yeah. than our spring crew to work in the winter. Um, Vicki, gardening in the winter in this particular um, building requires a lot of maintenance. Do you want to That's tell them right. about the ends? Okay, so uh, in the winter when it's really cold, we keep everything shut down and we cover, we actually cover crops that we have here. And because it can get to about 30 degrees in here yeah. or less. It will freeze. It does get cold up here. And um, you notice we still have flowers here, but if you go out, step outside and look at the garden, we have no flowers because we had a freeze a few nights ago, right? Yes, just a couple of nights ago. Yeah. So um, you can grow, you know, these tomatoes will probably last through December, I think. I hope they do. Yeah. We might end up having to cover them with the Agrabon, like yeah. you said. So we had a little bit of a frost here uh, earlier, and you'll notice the tops of the plants are kind of dead, or they're they well touched. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut everything back so that we can give uh, more energy to the rooted part of the, the plant. So I think we're, things are moving along here. It's looking they really are. good. They are. Once the frost come, fall starts and our winter garden begins. The White Mountain Community Garden is located on North 9th Place near the Navajo County Complex, just off the Deuce of Clubs. If you have any interest in joining or finding out more, contact us at 602-810-8175 or visit our website at www.wmcgarden.org. I just wanted to let you know a little bit about the garden. We have, we grow various vegetables here um, and everything is organic or heirloom. They're from organic or heirloom seeds. And there are various sections like the green section, the, the lettuce, onions and garlic, uh, squash, and these are various teams, and each team has a team leader. Well, this is the Seed Saving Garden, and I'm the team leader of the Seed Saving Garden. I wanted to go over a few things. A couple months ago, like July, August, everything here was so lush and beautiful and green and ready to pick, but unfortunately, here, we have to let everything mature 
So what happens is things just kind of mature and die on the vine or sort of die on the vine and that's when we go in and harvest the seeds. Like the beans, you see all of these beans just hanging on and they're bush beans. Um, that's why they're low to the ground. But now we can go in and pick all the beans uh, and shell them and collect the seeds. It's one of my favorite pro uh, crops in hell. We have squash in here that's ready to pick and seed. And actually there are other plants in here that have to wait. Your crops such as kale and radish. I, they're ready to harvest to eat, but uh, I just have to wait until they mature and bolt to flower and provide a pod so we can collect the seeds. Okay, so I was able to pull some beans, beef, just to rescue some beans from another garden, just to show you what they look like in their edible state, their dry state, and the beans. So these are the royal uh, burgundies. These are actually, they're looking black actually, but it's a rich, beautiful purple color. When it dries, this is the dried state. And these are the seeds that come out. And they have a little bit of a lavender tint to them, which is kind of neat. And the neat thing about these beans is that when you cook them, they turn green. It's a nice way to identify them. These are the wax beans, the yellow beans. These are the beans in their dry state. And what they produce are white beans. These are green tenders, or tender greens. This is how they look when they dry. And this is what the seed looks like. It's kind of a mottled uh, seed, two-tone. Now I couldn't find any slender rats, which are long and skinny. But these are the dried sea, dried beans, and they also produce a white seed. So we'll have to keep them separated. Although once you plant them, you'll you'll know uh, because it's it's a green, it's green, and these grow yellow.
Thanks for joining us uh, this time at Arizona Mountain Gardening. We sure learned a lot. We're preparing for next year and enjoying preserving the bounty of our harvest. Please join us next time as we continue learning and growing here at the White Mountain Community Garden. Thank you.